Okay, kumusta? And I will try to share no? a new topic in differential calculus and this time we will be working on implicit differentiation. Okay, but first I have to recall what is an implicit function. Now, so functions now written explicitly like if you solve for y in terms of x or it is expressed y in terms of x or x in terms of y, no? then that function is expressed explicitly or that is what we call as explicit function. In its general term, no? so y function of x or x a function of y, so they are actually written explicitly. So they are explicit functions. So the previous example we have are actually, are actually examples of explicit function like this one, this two. No? So you see that you have y expressed as a function of a variable x. Okay? Now the other one is in contrast with the explicit function. So there is a relation that exists, no? A relation between x and y, no? But as you say, ang imuhang y is not expressed clearly in terms of x, no? So it is generally, generally written as this, no? So you have a function containing x and y and maybe a constant c. So like, this relations below, no? so we can observe that our x and y are actually on sa group in one side of the equation or maybe put in the other side of the equation, so like this. No? So it is not properly arranged, same as the previous. Okay? Now, the alternate for this is to solve for y in terms of x or x in terms of y para it can be expressed same as this exactly. But using the implicit differentiation, then I don't need to have that approach. No? So, how to find the derivative of the function using implicit differentiation. So to find the dy dx or y prime, you have to differentiate each term with respect to x no, of the implicit function and solve for the dy dx or y prime and this process is known as the implicit differentiation. Now if even there is a term, no, term like x raised to a power n, then do the differentiation for that particular term under a power rule. So under power rule, we have n, our u is x, right? so n u to power n minus 1, du dx, but it is x, which is our u, so dx dx, but actually under rule number 2 of differentiation, this is 1. So what you have, if there is x to power n, so the derivative of which can be taken directly as n x to power n minus 1. And if there is a term, purely y to a power, or y to power n, then you have to follow the same rule. Now, if there is y involved in a term, then that term is the one which will produce your y prime. Like for example, this one, y to power n. So you have an n, y to power n minus 1, then you have a dy dx. The dy dx can also be denoted with y prime. So if there is a y no, in a variable y in a term, then that term is the one which will produce the derivative. Now, some terms are expressed no, in different, uh, different operations. No? So you can consider the formula which can be applied appropriately based on the operation involved in a term. Like for example, it is expressed as a product, so you can use a product rule. If it is expressed under division or operated under division, then you can also use a quotient rule. Okay, so here we have examples. So you are asked to evaluate or to find the first derivative of the given function. So y cube equal to 3x squared plus 7. If you have to solve this no, same manner as what we did previously, then we can solve for y in terms of x. Maybe you can take a cube root. But under implicit differentiation, then we don't need that one. No? Okay, like this. So different set, both sides of the equation. I put my operator. This is the operator. That means your y cube will be differentiated. The derivative of y cube is 3y squared. So dy dx, I put y prime to make it simpler. Derivative of 3x squared is equal to 6x. No? So in practice, no, the common error no, for students because they were, they were accustomed with the explicit differentiation or explicit uh, differentiation uh, in explicit function, they immediately put a dy dx. No? So actually, so putting dy dx will make your approach erroneous. No? So the dy dx will only appear to a term containing <coughs> y. Okay? 
So, as you notice, <coughs> you have the Y prime. And the Y prime now can be solved out from this. So, that is 6X <coughs> over 3Y squared. I can divide by 3. So, I have the answer for my Y prime, 2X over Y squared. Number 2. Let's try. <coughs> okay, so if my given is 2x cubed minus y cubed and that's equal to that is equal to 4xy squared okay by implicit differentiation i need to differentiate each term with respect to x what is the derivative of 2x cubed that is 6x squared kine this is 3y squared y prime kine i have a product involving constant so i just put my constant now, before my differentiating operator, or that would mean that I only have to differentiate the product of x, y squared, and the result of which will be multiplied with a constant 4 liter. Okay? So, this is the result. Differentiating each term with respect to x. That's the derivative. This is the derivative of my second term. I put my constant 4 as a factor of the derivative of the product. So, I have x. Derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. Plus y squared, 1 is the derivative of x. Then... Since your y prime is part of the grouping now in a bracket, then I have to distribute my 4 first before I can group terms containing y prime and terms which are free from y prime. I just put my y prime at the right hand side of my equality symbol and my terms with no derivative are in at the left. Now, because if I'm going to bring this at the left, then all the terms becomes negative. Now, so, I just put this at the right side so that all the terms will be positive. Okay? So, this is the effect of grouping and separating my terms with y prime. Okay? So, removing my y prime. So, I have 8xy from the first term. And I have 3y squared in my second term. These are the terms free from derivative. So, when that is transpose, that's why it becomes negative. So, this y prime. That is 6x squared minus 4y squared over... Okay, the denominator, which is the coefficient of your y prime. Okay? Now, if it is a fraction, now, always check because it might be that the fraction may be reduced to a lowest term. No? But if I'm going to check my numerator, my common factor is 2. If that is 2 as a common factor, so there is also no common factor or 2 in the denominator side. So, I think it would be useless to express this in factored form when deal is here reducible to a lowest term. So, that means this is already my answer. Okay, I have another problem or example I prepare now, which is this one. So, there is a poem now, which is given part of your equation. No? By the way, the poem must be checked if the poem really belongs to the curve. Because if that is a point outside the curve, no? so that poem cannot be used no? in finding the derivative of your function. Okay, this poem must be a point on the curve. And how to know that this point really belongs to the curve? So, you substitute for x. So, this becomes 16. 4. Right? So, we have 4 times 1. So, that is 2 uh, 4. So, I take the square root. Pila. 2. 2 times 4. That's it. And I have 16. So, I have 24 in the 2 terms. No? Then, 1 squared. So, 25. So, that's balance. So, meaning that point really belongs to the curve. Okay? So, I cannot proceed with differentiation. Derivative of 2x is 2x, or x squared is 2x. The derivative under a square root, what's the rule? 1 over 2 square root of x, or square root of xy. Then, the product of xy, because this is your u. Okay, so here is the result when it is differentiated. Okay? So, 2x from this, I have 4, which is a constant. So, I just take the derivative of the square root of xy. xy is your u in the formula. 1 over 2. Square root of u, correct? du dx, so product rule is applied. So, x, y prime plus y times 1. y squared is 2y, y prime. You notice that if there is y, there is also y prime to be present after you differentiate the function. Okay? Now, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 is becoming a common factor in every term. So, to simplify, I have to divide with 2. So, this is now the result. Now, so, x plus. So, xy prime plus y over the square root of xy, then plus y, y prime equal to 0. We will be solving for, for the y prime, no? Now, never waste time to simplify this equation containing variable 
when there is a specific value for xy because it would be easier to simplify when you are working with constant okay so this is how are we going to do that okay so with the equation simplified already okay i have a value of x which is 4 and a value of y immediately i substituted 4 to x and 1 for my y okay so this is now the substitution made okay so this is 2 correct so this is 4 y prime plus 1 with a denominator of 2 so to simplify because your equation have fraction sorry fractional term so you look for the lcd by multiplying with 2 every term so this is now an equation free from fraction this becomes it this is free from 2 so 4y plus 1 okay then this becomes 2y prime i group or i take the sum of my y prime term with the coefficient of 4 and 2 so that is 6y prime constant if combined this is 9 so separating it from a y prime term so i have minus 9 so y prime is equal to divide 9 over 6 but that is can that is reducible by 3 so we have a negative 3 halves as the value of our y prime so basta try to take note that if ever there is a value or a specific point a value of x and y no then do not simplify an expression containing variable but immediately substitute that and work with a simplification containing only constant that is easier to work with okay so next and this is the last now we are taking a derivative of higher order okay so we have y double prime needed when you are given a function 9x squared minus y squared equal to 36 now you might be thinking what curve is in the given okay but that is part of our analytic geometry so just try to recall it on your own no okay so i need to differentiate how many times twice okay because the order there is two correct so when differentiated with respect to x i have eaten x this is 2y y prime negative correct and this becomes zero there is a common factor of two so you divide by two so i have a a y prime which is 9x over y so if i need a second derivative so this may be further differentiated okay so under a cosine rule so i just put my constant outside and take a derivative only of a ratio of x over y and according to cosine rule for the x over y i have y squared here okay and i have y with a derivative of x which is one then minus x with y prime derivative of my denominator na? okay then in order that my y double prime will not also contain or will not also involve a derivative then my y prime is replaced now with 9x over y now previously solved now so it is substituted but the problem here is that now you arrive with what we call as a complex fraction now you try to look now when that is replaced now with that one so i come up with a complex fraction it is a complex fraction if a fraction also contains a fractional term in either side or both sides of the ratio so what makes it complex is the presence of y right? this is 9x squared over y so to simplify i need to remove my y so pwede ka mag subtract the terms in the numerator you take the lcd separately with the denominator but it would be easier if you multiply by y to remove this but if you are multiplying with y on only one side of your fraction then you are altering the given so that is why you need to neutralize by providing the same factor in the denominator side my only purpose is to remove my y here but i need to balance now the effect of the expression being distributed to the terms there so multiplied with y multiply with y because y over y is equal to one so you are not changing the value of the fraction but we are only going to change the form of the fraction so what is the effect of that this is y squared minus y is out this is 9x squared now so this is no longer a complex fraction no one na kayo makita ng fraction in the numerator and in the denominator side this becomes y cube okay now looking on this expression na if you notice kinesia is very close to the given only with a difference in sign 
you notice that that is 9x squared, this is minus 9x squared. If that is minus y squared, then it is y squared. So if you remove a negative 1 factor, my intention there is only to change the sign of these terms. No? So factoring out a negative 1, so I'm now free to start with 9x squared and followed with a minus y squared. Because if you distribute that again, then you will go back to the original. So, this can now be replaced with a given value which is equal to 36 to further simplify. This is 36, this is minus 9. So, minus 9 times 36 is 3 to 4 over y cubed. So, this is now the value of your second derivative of the function. But if you prepare to solve this way, okay, Razad, na? So, ganina, we differentiated the function and we come up with a equation involving a y prime. And I try to define what is my y prime out from this. Okay? This can be differentiated further. No? So, ganina nga itong differentiate is this one. No? So, if I'm going to differentiate this directly, so differentiating that will produce 9 from your first term. And according to the product rule, product of y and y prime, so I have a y and y double prime out from this. Then plus y prime y prime is the derivative of your y. Now, so there is a sign of negative. So, if you remove the grouping symbol, so all the terms there will be converted to their opposite. Okay? I need to solve for, for my y double prime. So, pwede na nimo transfer and I also have to replace this with what is being evaluated previously. Okay? So, this is the effect when I substituted the y prime. Okay, 9 minus y double prime then minus the value of your y prime, but that is in square, so that is 81 x squared over y squared. The equation is again containing fraction. So how to simplify? Multiply lang siya like LCD para mawa ni. So you multiply by y squared every term. Okay? So this is now the effect of multiplying with the LCD. That is to reduce the equation no? to contain no fraction actually. So we have 9y squared. This is a term involving the y prime. No? So we have, this becomes y cubed because it's originally y. I am, uh, I am multiplying this with y squared, correct? So minus, so this is now free from y squared. I can group terms with out a derivative like 9y squared together with 81x squared. And if this is separated, I have y cubed multiplied with y double prime. I'm interested with y double prime. So this is to be divided with y cubed, correct? Okay. But again, to simplify, these terms involves a common factor of 9. So if I'm going to divide with 9, so I can have a minus 9x squared, which is not the ring. So I have to include the negative in factoring. So I have to remove a negative 9, but I can start with a positive x squared term. No, 9x squared, correct? This is a negative y squared because of the negative being factored out. Now, knowing that this is actually equal to 36 in the given, so I have minus 9 times 36. The product of which is again 3 to 4 over y cubed. Let us check if that's really 3 to 4. Basic D. <laughs> no? So we have 9 times P length, 36. Okay, it's 3 to 4. Okay, so we have a negative 3 to 4 over y cubed. And this is now your answer, same as what we arrived previously. Okay, so that's all. And I think... So, that would be enough for you to learn now what is implicit differentiation. Okay, so I hope I, ha I was able to add no? a new learning in your mind. No? And I hope it is helpful as you explore more in differential calculus. Okay, so thank you for watching. And for those who are not able to subscribe yet, no? so try to subscribe. And invite others to subscribe no? See you again. Bye bye and see you in my next tutorial video. Okay? Good day.